Autumn is a proud owner of a magnificent ranch, and mother to beautiful horses. She often spends her time riding her horse, Spice, and the rest is spent offering horse riding lessons to the young kids. While Autumn's life may seem perfect on the outside, one day, she finds out that she's struggling to make ends meet, and the ranch is in even bigger trouble than she'd thought. Autumn tells her friend Chloe that a place this big wasn't meant to be run by just one person, and she can't seem to do it alone. As Autumn begins stress cleaning, she is struck with an idea. She plans to have a yard sale, to help raise some extra money. She gets together with Chloe and starts to gather stuff around the house for the yard sale. But when Chloe tries to make her sell some of her late husband Ben's old stuff, Autumn is hesitant to part with it just yet. At the yard sale, Autumn still has a hard time parting with her stuff, and ends up haggling for a lamp with an old man. Chloe eventually sells it to the man, and Autumn has no choice but to accept defeat. There, Autumn meets a real estate agent, whose overexcited child wants to buy Autumn's horses. The two women have a laugh about it, and the agent offers Autumn her card, telling her that she could easily sell a property this beautiful. Though Autumn never considered that, she still takes the card. Now that the house is clean of extra stuff, it feels even bigger to Chloe than it did before. Autumn tells her that when she bought this property with Ben, people ridiculed them for buying a house this big, but Autumn fell in love with it at first sight. It's evident in her smile and the sparkle in her eyes how much Autumn loves this place. But she doesn't feel too good about her prospects of keeping it, and hopes that the yard sale helps her. Later that night, Autumn is accompanied by her father-in-law, Howard. She tells him that though the yard sale did better than she expected, she can barely make the next month's mortgage. Howard sympathizes with her. Autumn confides in him, saying that she feels as though she's letting Ben's memory down. Howard assures her that there's no way she could ever do that. He has full confidence in her that if she just follows her instincts, she will do justice to Ben's memory, even if that means letting go of the ranch and moving on. Comforted by his words, Autumn wonders if there's another option to save the ranch. She considers starting training racehorses once again, like she used to before. She wonders if she hadn't taken a step back from it in the first place, maybe she wouldn't be in this mess. But with Ben's passing, she just couldn't continue by herself. Autumn feels at a loss, but Howard acts like a pillar of strength and supports her. Autumn spends a few days thinking a lot about how to help her situation. One day, at the Sunday family brunch, a distraught Autumn announces that she has decided to put the ranch up for sale. She tears up as she breaks the news to her horses and the rest of her family, but she is relieved to receive nothing but their support. When the buyers start pouring in, Autumn can't help but regret her decision. She hates how everyone wants to make their own changes to the property. One day, she enters the stables and finds a handsome-looking man with her horses. His name is Jake Stevens, and he's a prospective buyer. She is surprised to see her horses behaving so well with Jake, and something about it makes her feel at peace with the prospect of him buying the ranch. Once they get acquainted, Jake tells Autumn that he's in the construction business, but Autumn can't exactly say she's seen him around. Jake tells her that he isn't from around these parts of the country, and is usually on the road for the job. As they continue to talk, Jake compliments the ranch and the property. He even says there's something about the place that makes it hard to get it out of his mind. And this reminds Autumn of herself when she first saw the property. She tells him how bothered she is with all the other buyers just stomping around her house, wanting to change every detail that she carefully chose. Jake tells her that if this were his house, he wouldn't change a thing. His words make her feel more at ease with him. After contemplating a bit, Autumn decides to sell the house to Jake, even though his offer isn't all that impressive, only because she thinks the horse is like him. The agent tells her that after the deal is closed, Autumn will have 30 days to move out. As sad as she is to be doing this, Autumn signs the papers. Jake signs the papers in a small cafe in town, and tells the agent about his plans to flip the property. The agent seemed to have been unaware of this before, but the deal is done now. At the counter, while placing his order, Jake asks around for a hotel, and while conversing with the lady, he finds out that Autumn's husband passed away a while ago. Meanwhile, Autumn is having a hard time parting with old memories. She opens up a box of Ben's old stuff and gets emotional, putting it off for the next day. The next day, Jake arrives at the ranch with his contractor. Autumn doesn't like it, because she thought he didn't want to change a thing about the place, but Jake thinks the place needs to be spruced up a bit. He heads out to the gazebo, but before he can even say what his plan is, Autumn vehemently tells him to leave the gazebo alone. She requests that he make whatever changes he wants to after her 30 days are up. While checking her mail, Autumn finds out that she has offers from other ranches to train horses. Howard is excited for her, but Autumn isn't sure she can still do the job, since she hasn't trained a racehorse in years. But Howard assures her that something like that doesn't just go away. Another morning, Autumn is minding her business when she spots Jake with a bunch of guys at her ranch. She storms out in anger, reminding him that he can't start construction on her property just yet. Jake assures her that they're only taking a few measurements, but Autumn feels betrayed by him, especially since he said he wasn't going to make any changes. Jake tells her he's only installing a hot tub, but Autumn doesn't want to witness her home being changed by someone else. She tells him that soon she'll be out of his hair, and will remember this place as it has always been. 
But Jake doesn't think that places are meant to be the same forever. He would rather that he leave a mark on whatever place he visits, but Autumn wants to remember it exactly as she found it. Later that day, she finds Jake tampering with the gazebo, trying to sand it before painting it. Autumn is upset to see him, but Jake tells her he's doing it to spruce it up for her. There have already been too many changes for her liking, and Autumn just wants the gazebo to be left alone. After a long day at work, Autumn tells Chloe about her plans to start training horses again, but she doesn't think she can do it, after all these years. Instead, she suggests Chloe take up the job, and offers to train her personally. Howard and Autumn cheer Chloe up as she trains, and soon Jake joins them as well. Later, Jake decides to get some work done at the pastry shop, and while talking to his contractor about the remodel, he realizes he's got himself in some trouble with Autumn. He hasn't told her that he's not buying the ranch to keep, but to flip it and sell. The only reason he didn't tell her before is that he was worried she would pull out of the deal. The contractor Larry suggests Jake keep up the pretense until she leaves. He then runs into Howard at the cafe. As they get talking, Howard tells Jake more about their town, and how it's a shame a town so cute doesn't get much tourism. Howard assures him that if he sticks around a bit, he'll fall in love with the town for sure. At the ranch, Jake helps Autumn with painting. She asks him what he's going to do with the ranch, when he can't ride a horse. Jake tells her that he isn't sure about that yet, but all he can say is that he saw potential in the place. Autumn can relate to that, because she had felt the same way. The two get playful as Autumn teases him about being scared of riding a horse, and Jake brushes paint on her face. Back inside the house, she points at the washroom for Jake, and there, in the hallway, he sees a picture of Autumn and Ben inside the gazebo, and finally understands her attachment to it. Over a cup of coffee, Jake asks her about Howard and Bard. Autumn tells him that Ben's mother passed away when he was still a kid, and Howard raised him as a single parent. Howard and Barb just got together last year. When he asks about Ben, Autumn tells him that Ben passed away two years ago from cancer. While sitting outside, Jake has a lot of questions about Autumn's life, but she feels weird talking to him about her personal life since she barely knows anything about him. He goes ahead and tells her that apart from construction, he does some carpentry as well. Anything that involves him doing things with his hands. Autumn thinks he's a natural-born rancher. Her parting gift to him will be her teaching him how to ride a horse. As they talk some more, Autumn discovers that Jake has never settled in one place for long. Meanwhile, she has always had a hard time with goodbyes, and feels like the hardest. After Ben, will be this ranch they built together. Autumn spends time riding around the ranch, living her last few days there. During one of her lessons, one of Autumn's students, Maddie, asks if Jake could tag along. Unable to deny the young girl's request, Jake and Autumn agree. Autumn teaches him a few basics of riding a horse, and slowly, Jake catches on. Soon they arrive at a picturesque valley, and Jake is amazed by the beauty of it. But Maddie tells him that since it's a secret spot, he isn't allowed to say anything to anyone. Though Jake disagrees. He likes the spot so much, he tells Autumn that she should bring more people up here. For an event, or a party, or a romantic sunset to a ride. Or maybe rent the place out for weddings, since it's such a great spot. To that, Autumn agrees that it would be a great spot for a wedding. Back at the ranch, Autumn makes fun of Jake for riding a horse just like a 12-year-old would. They joke around with each other, and Autumn is visibly happier when she's around Jake. Even Chloe thinks that. She tells Autumn that ever since Jake showed up, the whole place has been livelier, and that maybe Autumn has a crush on the guy. And even though Autumn denies her theory, she can't help the smile on her face. She later seeks help from Jake to fix the drip in her sink. While he's at work, she asks him why he got into construction and he tells her it's because of his dad, who was always into fixing things. As she helps him up from the ground, the two get closer than anticipated, and that smile on Autumn's face returns with a blush. As the time to leave comes closer, Autumn can't help but feel emotional. She spends time around the gazebo, and feels sad when she finds that it's starting to fall apart. On Sunday morning, when Jake arrives at Autumn's place unannounced, he sees everyone having fun cooking breakfast together. Autumn tells him about their traditional Sunday morning breakfasts, and invites him to join in. After the meal, Jake asks her if she'd like to go on a walk with him. He brings her to another picturesque spot that he found while exploring the property. Autumn asks him why he doesn't have roots in one place, and Jake tells her that it's because his dad also moved around a lot. Autumn understands, since the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. Suddenly, Jake tells her he has something to say to her. He's planning to tell her his real reason for buying the ranch, but loses track of his thoughts in her presence. They both lean to kiss each other, when Autumn suddenly pulls back, saying she has to go. She rushes out of there, leaving Jake very confused. Later, Autumn calls up Blackwell Ranch, who sent her a letter earlier, and fixes an appointment. While searching for a pen in her drawer, Autumn comes across an old picture of her and Ben, and gets emotional. Just then, Howard walks in looking for her, and sees her in a distraught state. Autumn tries to hide it, but Howard knows her well. He talks to her about what's bothering her, and Autumn asks him how he ever moved on after Ben's mom passed away. She feels at a loss with her new feelings for Jake, but is unable to let go of the fears holding her back. Howard tells her that it also took him a long time to put himself out there, but it happens once a person feels ready. Autumn is scared of being vulnerable to someone again, 
only to be left in the end. Howard soothes her fears by telling her that Ben didn't leave her, because he sees him in the way Autumn smiles and talks, and in her sense of humor, and in the way she treats the horses. He assures her that Ben is always going to be with them. But Autumn is worried to move on, because she doesn't want to stop loving Ben. Howard assures her that she doesn't have to, her heart is so big that she can make people around her whole. But over the years, she's forgotten to do so for herself. He tells her that one day she'll wake up and realize that she's ready to let someone make her heart whole again. An emotional Autumn feels comforted by Howard's words. She misses Ben, but realizes it's time for her to start anew by packing up his old stuff for donation. Meanwhile, Jake is about to finalize the sale with the real estate agent at Barb's coffee shop. Barb overhears their conversation as the agent congratulates Ben for being a great businessman. But Ben's had a change of heart. He tells her that he doesn't want to buy Autumn's ranch, but instead go into business with her. He shows her his plans for a bed and breakfast which he wants to run at the ranch with Autumn. He thinks that Autumn is an amazing person, who is loved by everyone, but her business is too small to save the ranch unless they can convert it into a and b Later, as Jake's traveling to the shop in the city, he runs into Howard at the ranch, who acts weirdly rude to the guy. Not thinking much of it, Jake arrives at the store, where he bumps into Autumn, who's buying horse feed. He sees a pamphlet in her hands that says, Sunset Tours. Autumn tells him that this is the farewell tour she plans to give her students. Though she seems to be in a rush to get away from him, Jake proposes that they get dinner together that night, and offers to cook. He tells her he has a new business proposition for her. Autumn is hesitant to accept his invitation, but eventually agrees. After he leaves, she calls up Blackwell Stables and cancels her appointment with them. Back at the stables, the horses are acting up, as they do when it's about to storm. But the skies seem clear to Autumn. She gets home and spends time getting ready for her date. Nervous as she is, Autumn is also excited. Dressed in a beautiful dress, Autumn starts to stress clean her kitchen, when Jake shows up with flowers in hand. He takes one look at her, and is mesmerized by how beautiful she is. The two of them get to the cooking, and Jake makes Autumn his sous chef. They talk and laugh and giggle, having a great time in each other's company as they cook. It thunders outside, and Autumn realizes that the horses were right about the storm after all. While eating, Jake asks her if she's thought of any other business other than training horses, but Autumn tells him that she's always wanted something to do with horses. But now, the ranch seems too big for one person to handle, and after Ben passed away, she never could find her footing again. Jake asks her if she ever wants to fall in love again, and Autumn turns the question on him. It's then that she finds out Jake had once been engaged to his college girlfriend, who eventually ended up marrying his best friend. Autumn feels bad for him, but he tells her that he's much closer to the girl now than he ever was. But he would like to find true love again. To that, Autumn agrees. A moment passes between them, and they're about to kiss again when the blackout blocks their romance. Autumn lights up candles, and they resume their conversation. Jake is about to tell her something important when the phone rings, and they're blocked once again. Autumn answers the call, and it's Howard. He and Barb tell Autumn what Barb heard in the cafe earlier, about Jake buying the ranch to flip it and sell it to the highest bidder. Heartbroken and shocked, Autumn confronts Jake the very next moment. She yells at him for lying to her and deceiving her all this while, not letting Jake get a word in edgeways. She runs away to the stables to check on her horses, who are acting up because of the storm. When Jake shows up to help her and explain his side of the story to her, Autumn yells at him to leave her alone, telling him that she'll be out of his hair in a week. Having no choice at the moment, Jake leaves. That night, Autumn sleeps with the horses. She wakes up next morning, and Chloe shows up at the ranch. Seeing that Autumn slept in the stables, Chloe realizes her date must have not gone so well. Autumn tells her that it wasn't a date, and that she found out Jake is flipping the ranch. Chloe doesn't take this news too well either. Outside, Autumn sees the battered shape of her precious gazebo, and feels hopeless and disappointed. Later that day, she decides to leave town for the weekend to look around at some stables for her horses. Just as Autumn leaves, Jake arrives at the ranch looking for her. He sees the gazebo is broken, and starts to fix it, when Chloe shoes him away angrily, but not before he finds out that Autumn will be back on Monday. Meanwhile, Autumn finds a trailer to move into for the time being. That weekend, Jake spends most of his time fixing the gazebo, and Chloe doesn't interfere with his process. Even Maddie knows that Jake is already in love with Autumn, and is trying to redeem himself by working around the ranch. Chloe enjoys seeing him this way. She goes looking in his car, finds the plan for the bed and breakfast, and gets excited. She sends pictures of those plans to Autumn. Later that day, Jake is resting in his car when Chloe brings him a cup of coffee. She asks him why he's doing all this work, and Jake hesitates to say the words. But no need for them, since Chloe already knows why. Autumn returns home with a purpose. She confronts Jake about the Carly's bed and breakfast plans that he designed, and he finally tells her that this was his business proposition for her. She can't close the ranch, because he has now seen how happy it makes everyone to be there, especially her. He wants to move in with her and run this place together, but obviously, he was going to ask her first. Autumn hears out his piece as he tells her that he's not here to replace Ben's place in her life, but after being around her for some time, he's seen how kind and generous and smart she is, and now he wants to build something with her. 
But Autumn can't get past the fact that he lied to her in the beginning, and asks why he came clean to her, instead of just building his own place. Jake tells her that it's not about just business for him anymore. But Autumn is worried. What if she agrees to do this, but has no guarantee that he'll stick around? Jake puts her mind at ease by telling her that there's no way he's going anywhere, because he's finally found a place that makes him want to stay. And because he's got her stuck in his mind. Autumn feels the same way, and the two finally kiss. In the end, Jake and Autumn open up their B&B, naming it Carlisle Stevens' bed and breakfast. The property is livelier, with people surrounding it and enjoying the beautiful views. Jake and Autumn are happier than ever, seeing their business flourish.